Hi everyone. This video is um, called the domain of life. The domain contains all the information of life and every facet of life. Starting from the dream of life of the creator, I call that living creator because it's undefined and there's never been a beginning or end to life. It's always existed. But I call it just living creator, live in, live in creation, living creator. And living creator, the best way that I have been able to explain it from what I have experienced is that imagine a dream is a dome or a bubble, but I would like to call it like a domain. And the creator is holding it in its hand, holding this dream in its hand. And all the information that makes up the dream of life is contained within the domain. And to set the domain into motion, to give it life, the creator moved its life into the domain and came as man on the land of its creation. And everything from the domain, so if you imagine the domain is like this at the bottom and it has this dome-like top and in the dome at the top is all the celestial space and bodies which is all the souls of all a man that ever experienced the dream of life as the stars and the clusters the stars the families the 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 motherlands of the soul groups of everyone and they all are living in the dream of life because they've never left it they've always still part of it and the creator is there holding the whole dream as its consciousness so in that domain is the consciousness of living creator and all the information of that intention that's set into motion uh, by giving life through breathing in and doing all that is in everything that we experience as life not as fiction but life it's uh, all things of life and then the creator created a child it's just these are just analogies guys just make sense of this and the child is in the domain. So there's the domain and there's the child inside the domain accessing all the information held in the domain. And in doing so, the child is creating its own domain of its dream of life. Now, nothing is happening to the child from outside of the, of the creator itself. Well, the creator is not teaching the child anything about anything. It's not needed because it's already there for the child to experience. Like we don't have to teach a puppy dog what it is to be a dog, so it becomes a dog. It's already built in. And all of man is like that. And the creator came as man in the dream of life. So when it thought it out and created it all, it then, from the soil, from everything of the, of the ground, everything coming up, standing on the land, was the creator as man, us. And there's never been any separation ever since. Forget time and space, because there never, never was a beginning to this has always been an eternal dream time to, to, to life now as long as we don't corrupt the information by interfering and, 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 and making things up which I've explained in, in other videos the child has direct sensory experience through its senses touch taste feel smell hear see the senses gives the child access to the to the purpose of every life form from the most tiniest to the greatest in co-creation from mountains and, 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 and large, large mountain ranges through to valleys and hills and down to the streams and the rivers and all the creatures in between and the insects and everything. And each life form, including inanimate, you know, from rock and all that, they have a domain containing information of its purpose as intended by the Creator. And so that's the original dream, the original blueprint. Now, we've had a lot of experiments done to life. We've done it to all kinds of living things. Some of the ones that I remember were the ones they'd done to flies, where they made flies become blind. And when they stopped the experiment, within a few generations, all the flies came back to being able to see again. So they returned back to the original blueprint, the intention. That is the information held in the domain of its life. They've done it with rats and mice, and they've made them become unsocial. And when they stopped the experiment, and they stopped being, let them be vicious, they eventually returned back to being social. 
Now, it's the same thing with everything of nature. The most, the most so much we destroy it. When we stop it, it gradually all returns back to how it used to be. Because that's the pull in the domain of the dream of life, held in like a suspended state of, of, of consciousness that, that has no time or space reference. There's no measurements to this. It's just totally undefined. It just is what it is. It's life. And so the creator, in creating a child, gifted all the information of its intention to the child. And through the senses, the child has access. And the more the child is exploring nature and being with nature, observing butterflies and, you know, from caterpillars turning to butterflies, watching frogs, watching tadpoles turn into frogs, and, you know, and, and watching birds, and just this, 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 this endless potential for a sensory experience for the child to learn about who it is and what it is and what it's part of naturally without any instruction needed no no one needs to explain anything to the child because it's already built in the child just aspires through its dreaming and creating its true life and um and then that child meets a partner and now we have the domain of the marriage so on the on the domain we now have a man and a woman, just to keep it simple for now, in a dream that they hold together. And all the information of their dreaming is in that domain. So not only each one has their domain of that information of their life purpose and all their intentions, but now they have a mutual co-creation too. But then also are all their ancestors, their parents. And this is what we call the motherland. Because within the domain of creation is the domains of the motherlands of the families of man and the tribes of man. And all who lived these dreams, all their purpose of life, because every time we're breathing out, we're creating, we're adding our intentions, our dreams, our thoughts and feelings and all that in the breath that we're breathing out. And it's it resonates forevermore. It's eternal. And we can sense that anywhere. And it can be encoded in a butterfly in the trees of the motherland where we're living. So three or four generations down the line, a child can be contemplating on why that was made as a table. And no one needs to explain to the child because the child can get the information directly from the purpose of everything around that table and sense the ancestor communing with the child. Because the ancestor hasn't died. There's no death. <clears throat> the, the information of life is still there. It's just undefined. And... All of life was like this, and this was what we call paradise. Because no one ever thought or dreamt about wanting to corrupt a domain of life. From the greatest domain of all of creation, because that major domain, you can call it earth, you can call it uh, nature, you can call it celestial bodies, celestial space, you can call it man. You can just put it all on, in the umbrella of creation. Because every instance of our life, we are in creation. Every instance is unique and original, never to be repeated. There's not one moment the same as the next. There's no leaf same as the next leaf. There is no feather the same as another. You could never find two of the same. As same as two grains of sand or two particles of water or air or of, of soil or anything like that. Everything is unique and original. It all has its domain within domains within domains that forms the magnificence of, of, the, of the motherland of where man is raised and forms their families. And, and then the unions come when, when one of them meets from another domain, from another motherland, a partner. And then they move to where they want to create their domain, their family domain, and carry on the natural heritage and lineage of life as man, as creation. So when the creator created life in this domain and held all the information in it it's standing as man on the land it's out of the soil out with all the trees out with everything else are all them flying and flittering and moving and gripping and crawling everything doing what it's doing for the greater purpose of the dream of life as it's held in in this eternal moment eternal instance of life and we have raised up in this and we form our natural domain and it's undefined and it's always been like this. It's never been a beginning to this. But then one of us decided, way back, 
to change this by forming fiction, by creating definitions and explaining to another a possibility of something that they liken themselves to. And that information is not actually in the domain of, of life itself. You, don't, you can't go to a definition in nature and learn about it. You can only go to a man who's dreamt it and holds on to it and then decides to explain it and instruct it to someone else. And in this explanation is the evolution of fiction. Because, the fic for example, when I say to you, that is a daffodil and that is yellow in the domain, the life form never said to you or to us that it's a daffodil and that it's yellow, nor is the script that comes with it of all the history, the histor history of the explanation of the purpose of the life form. The only way you know the truth is when you're directly experiencing the life form through your senses as it lives and you learn about its purpose in that moment of eternal moments. So you don't go to a dead frog that we killed to cut it open to learn about a frog. You go and observe the life of the frog and access its intention, its consciousness, everything that it has that makes what the frog is in its domain, in the domain of its pond, amongst the domain of snakes who are there in their domain, amongst everything else that's doing what they're doing. Everything has a natural purpose. And all of it together maintains optimum perfection of the dream of life so it doesn't collapse, doesn't fall apart. And that's, people say it's survival of the fittest. It's just maintaining optimum perfection so that when, when, a, when, when the, for example, a cat chases, it's a mouse or, ch or a, a big cat chases um, like something in, in, the, in the lands in, in Africa and is chasing whatever and ratting, it gets the weakest one. It's not that it's, it's killing and being unfair. It's actually maintaining the optimum of, that sp of those creatures. And then you'll find them at the water holes, all sitting with each other, or near each other, drinking from the same water hole. This is known. There's a lot of evidence about this. So, the only reason why nature does what it does is because we've introduced so much fear and 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 fear porn and and and, and emotional stuff, which is all rooted in fiction, because nothing in nature teaches us this. It's just someone who's learned to imagine it and started acting it acting out the, the scripts of the fiction that we call fear. And then we play that out amongst life. And so we go now with guns and we chase bears and kill bears and we hunt, hunt all kinds of creatures and kill them. And we chase them, even fish and all kinds of things. Things that we're never meant to be killing and eating because it's, it was never our purpose to do that. You're raised by nature, you would never harm anything. So there'd be some, there are other things going on about all this that and I'm still coming to terms with. Were we all breatharians originally? Were, was it, it's okay to eat the fruit that comes from the tree because we're not killing the tree and we're eating, eating its fruits and eating things off plants that gave us their, their seeds or gave us their, their fruits and we ate them without killing the life form? Um, you know, there's a lot still for us to wake up to because we've now gone so asleep. Because we've had so many people inside our heads that have middled in the domains of our life. And this is what the occult is all about. Because when someone decided to, to inculcate another man to, to define reality to a child and explain it, the dreaming of the child has been altered now, where now the child is now dreaming information that another man has explained to the child. So basically, while the child keeps recalling that script, of that, defin of that definition, it's another man now inside the child's head that the child is dreaming. It, the child is dreaming the man who's explained the script, the color yellow, daffodil, and da 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 da. Now, that we were never meant to be inside anyone else's head ever about anything. Because when you do that, we're desecrating what is sacred because of the uniqueness and originality of every life. We're not meant to form sameness. So the domain, the reason, the reason we have today what we call the occults, occults, cults, is, which is behind Freemasonry, is the intention to get in your head to define life for you and to keep providing information to you coming from their dreams so that you become hijacked and become a subject to the scripts 
and the emotions that came with the scripts that they manufactured through ritual sacrifice, which is another subject, so that you will feel the emotions that compel you, that can make you comply and acquiesce, to stay within the information that defined the matrix of an artificial domain that has no place in reality. But all that time that we have let, our, let them get inside our heads to define us, we're now forgetting who we are or what we are. And we raise our kids up and they go to school and then they go to college and all that and they become involved in all the, all the courses and careers, all of the fiction. Our children are not in the domain of their creation. They have other men and women inside their heads who told them how to think and feel about everything that forms the artificial personality, the artificial life of the person in law, if you want to call it that way, ruled by the rules of, of the person in law. And our real children aren't here because they're just scripts within scripts within scripts. And they've been trained to place their good heart with it. And so they'd be excited about doing all the things they do that forms the early stage, you know, from the ages of 15, 14, 16, right through to 22, 23, 24, coming out of uni. You know, and you can have kids coming out and they're skilled looking through microscopes and telescopes, you know, fictions. And every single thought in their head is not coming from what they're observing of reality. They're not getting the information directly. They're getting it from recalling all the scripts and everything else they added to it, which they didn't pass on to others to carry on the fiction, that history, his story, his story. So if you can grasp that, this is how you make a drone. This is how you create robots. This is how you create a man who becomes a subject under another man. We subjugate it under another man. And we've been taught to believe that these dreams are our dreams. That is our life when it's not at all. It's another man inside your head with a dream that they've created that formed the whole system life. And that's why you have all these alphabets and letters and words and meanings behind the, the letters, which they don't teach you at school. You don't learn the meaning of letters and their intentions behind because that's all in code amongst the select few who are initiated into these skills, this craft and practice of Freemasonry that forms the occult because... You form a group of men and women into a cult and call it Christianity or any religion or call it um, punk rock. It's a cult of sameness. Everyone's thinking the same information, but all of it's borrowed from those who put it all in their heads. It doesn't matter if the medium's done through music, whatever. You accept that. You're now asleep because who you really are has been set aside to allow the matrix to play out through your head. So you will never be able to sense. So when children are brought up by nature, we naturally sense the information instinctively, instant by instant, faster than unfolding zip files, massive mass information, faster than the speed of thought that we can comprehend today. And the more the child is allowed to form its domain, it's soul, because that's what the domain is. It's their soul. It's, their original, it's the original dream of life of man. The more they connect to the big picture, and the more they will never harm the domain of anything, from the tiniest to the greatest, to the motherlands that they are part of, and the motherlands of every other tribe and village and family. Because they, they sense it. It's, it's a natural thing built in. We don't desecrate what's sacred. And this is what we call freedom, because the true freedom to live that life, undefined, is a natural thing that happens for all of us. So one of our ancestors way back decided, and what all the reasons are behind that led to all this is another subject, another video, decided to define someone. And this is the forbidden tree with the snake, passing, well, later times, the apple, the forbidden fruit to Eve, to pass it to Adam. The definition, explanation, and structure education, which is forbidden of life to explain it. The snake is a man who has not provided uh, Eve with full disclosure of the intention to get her 
to fall into his spell of his definition to get her to recall it again and again in her head. So she's spinning in the spell, just like a hypnotist on stage that pulls a bunch of people from the audience, all susceptible to hypnosis. And there they all are running around an animal farm. Each of them have been given scripts and stories to perform, recalling from the memory bank of what it was that they were taught was a pig and duck and horse. And all of them oblivious to what is going on in these spells. Because we're all taught to spell, to be put under the spell. So this man began this. And the evolution of this, believing that they're doing the right thing, that they have the right point of view, that the right version became enforcement. They started to enforce. And this evolved into, it became surveillance and invasion. It became war and chaos. So it's... From all of this, where we've lost connection of the natural domains, because our own domain of our life, our soul, has been compromised, been corrupted, been distorted by so much fiction that ain't true, that is not our real life. So, from the biggest picture today, from the evolution of this lie and the, and the, and the seeking to maintain domination within their religions that forms the satanic ways of life of Freemasonry. The reason why they have chemical trails in the sky that come out of aeroplanes and why they have uh, all these uh, objects that penetrate through the celestial space is to corrupt the information. And then when you add to it all the frequencies and pulses and vibrations of, of all forms of media communication and other intentions, even uh, sinister stuff to do harm, it's disturbing all the information that's held in the celestial space. And when you add HAARP, which is H-A-A-R-P, which are military installations sending up these horrific infrequencies and pulses into the ionosphere, what we call the celestial space. And then with mobile 5G and 6G and other digital technologies and then the chemical trails, which have got all these terrible things in them, including barium, all the heavy metals, barium oxide, aluminium oxide, uh, human body parts, uh, probably come from placentas, mold and fungus and it just goes on there's just there's so much evidence of what's been found inside this crap and all of it collectively is the disturbance to the domains we can't sense the ancestors communing as the stars to us we can't sense so when we're amongst nature their 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 information that's communing with us has now been corrupted been distorted it's formed of confusion because our head is also spinning with all the explanations in our head from when we appeared in the womb. And that's what is really happening. The chemical trails and the 5G, 6G and the harp and the, and the coronavirus with the M mRNA injections and all that is to get us to disconnect from sensing reality directly so we don't have the ability to sense. And that's how you form the hive mind of drones in a cult, a collectivism of socialism and communism, because that's what capitalism is. Capitalism is communism and socialism. You know, big pyramid infrastructures of Bunnings or Woolworths or Coles and big corporations taking up all the small businesses that were in the earlier days of, of the system of Joe and, Joe and, Lu and Luigi's and plumbing store and Little Mary's uh, grocery store because they could never commit and be manipulated by the, the, the fiction of money and interest rates and how all that was contrived to form the economies that allow bigger corporations to take over and swallow up all the middle class and all the middle class businesses until we left with just a labour force and some general pockets still left of whatever remains of middle class, but they're usually in very heavy debt now massive debt, probably 200% income, so every dollar they earn, they probably owe $2 or $3. We don't know how bad it is now, because back in 2005, when I looked at it, it was 160%, so for every dollar, they had $1.60 for a family of four. And all this is fiction. Money's just fiction. And all we're really doing is working with land, food, water, shelter, which is what creation is. It just a head's been brainwashed with all these fictions within fictions within fictions. So, you know, um, 
the reason why they come after us from so young in the womb is they want their presence in our head. So we are recalling what they want us to think and feel. They don't want us to connect with the natural information of life itself. So we form the domain of our true life. So our domains get compromised, become heavily pixelated by so much nonsense. Because nonsense is that we're imagining all this information to be true. Your mum and dad told us and we've seen in our brothers and sisters and in our wider families. And as we go to school and we sit through our neighbours and through the local towns and villages and when we go shopping and go to sport and, you know, little athletics and go to music classes, you see this ongoing fiction accepted as reality. Now, even all the instruments that make up music are fictions. They can't make a sound of their own because there's no life there. We have to perform for the fiction. And while we perform for the fiction, we forget who we really are. So we don't know what the true natural song of our real life is. So we can become emotionally caught up and say it's beautiful that we listen to symphonies and orchestras and rock bands and all this stuff, but it's all fiction. You see, life forms manage their full responsibility for their life because they carry the domain with all the information that forms the cow or the giraffe or whatever, a fly or a mosquito. And so when, for example, when dogs, wolves come together and they produce their puppies, they're already wolves. Unless we've gone in and interfered and turned these wolves into all these myriads of dogs that we have today. So many of them with so many serious issues now and getting worse. And we have huge veterinary fictions in place now to deal with all these issues of hip problems and back problems and various complications to do with breeding. All of this came out of wolves. Tiny, tiny little dogs to big dogs. It all came out of wolves. Various types of wolves. The original dogs with the original domain of their purpose now being got at by us, which others have done to us, got at us. And now we call Greeks and Italians and Aussies and punk rockers and left or right in the politics or Christian or Jew. Race, culture, creed, title, standing, but they're all fictions. So you, you, we have to perform the scripts of the fiction for the fiction to be given the impression that it has some presence amongst the living, amongst life. But even if we go to a, a, um, a live theatre performance of a, of a man performing a Santa Claus in front of, a, say, half a million audience, and everyone's standing, clapping, and applause at the end of the show, it's still not proof that Santa Claus exists. It's just a man in costume and title acting in the scripts set to the stage and props that forms the domain, the artificial domain of Santa Claus with the reindeers and everything else. All of it is fake. And everything of the system is this, artificial domains. And while we get lost in these things, we have forgotten who we are. We no longer remember who we are. And that is a curse, because while we are lost, we will do immense harm to nature during the time we're fulfilling the information of the scripts of fiction that we believe to be part of reality, part of our lives. And that's why we have motor cars and why we're running around with machines. All this distorted information that's entering into the domains of innocent children who have to learn to accept all these fictions and all the history and historic stuff that comes with it to uphold the, the progress of civilization and everything. It has no relevance to the child because it's not the child's life. The child, look at this piracy, the vessel, the vessel's been attacked by a pirate ship. The vessel of the child is in the womb of the mother. And the child has already been got up because the mother and those around the womb are defining boy or girl, what colors, and how the boy and girl going to be. And, and look, it, you'd be amazed just the scale of what we're doing to predetermine the life the child will enter into and perform in those scripts. And all that is fiction, including gender. There's no life there. There's no love. And this is uh, the biggest thing about it is that when we define children, we don't love them. Because life is love. So when the Creator created the dream of life, that life 
is the life of the creator as the spirit of its life in the dream of life of its consciousness all that information is that love the pure information that we're meant to access to form the domains of our lives of what it is to be a man undefined each of us unique and original within the domains of creation itself so as we do that we form our motherlands and from that many motherlands and some us leave to start more motherlands of nature and as we're breathing out more more is expanding more more of life is is created there's always room for everyone there never ever never not been enough room because we just expand it naturally undefined not by measurements it's through creation itself so when you have a domain and this is the most important part of why I wanted to do this video is that when we say we love someone or something but we actually don't we just say it in words all the information going into the dream of that domain say for example it's a marriage all that information going in one of the partner who loves the dream and lives for that dream is held in the domain which is what creation of that dream of life is all about but if the other partner doesn't really love the other partner that partner has stepped outside of that domain and all the information going into that domain from the other partner is siphoned out side into another domain that has no place with the original domain of the marriage and so when that partner wakes up or ever comes to realize what's happened they left with nothing because nothing is anti-life anti-christ fiction is anti-life meaning everything we gave life to the intention of the other partner siphoned it because they had no life there was no love there for that partner and for that domain so they sucked it all out whether they're asleep or not doesn't matter and you can have so many divorces today where people are in such shock i've noticed it amongst a lot of men this happened to a lot of men their partner left them and they wondered what they did in the last 20 30 years or 40 years and they're left with nothing emptiness because there was nothing there in the first place when the partner had decided they didn't love their partner meaning they didn't want to give life to the dream that they had created in their marriage and their partnership so the dream was corrupted now when we introduce fiction we do the same thing because fiction is nothing and nothing is death because that's the end result because when there's no life there it's anti-life it means a death nothing so we are raising children in domains that are unnatural where they think they love nature and everyone talks about it but they actually don't because their lifestyle goes against everything they say that they love and so the devastation to nature to the motherland to the domains is being destroyed all the while they still think they love nature they're consumers and materialists we're all compromised by this including me i'm inside this car using technology all of this that was destroying the purpose of natural life forms that we'd gone in and bulldozed and just turned them into fictions and made them into plastic and concrete and still things that have no life there and we're now a slave to perform everything of that fiction at all times and we formed a matrix of anti-life that means we have to destroy all of life because we don't love life to uphold the fiction that's formed our suburban lives and city lives and our careers and all our titles and standings and our race and ethnicities and everything else and all the conflicts and battles and this is why we now have the war with the ukraine and russia is to keep you distracted and why we had the coronavirus to keep you distracted to keep you lost in the mattress so you never wake up and realize what's really going on here you're just in entertainment you're entertained you're tainted you've entered and been tamed by this lie that is a curse that has us destroy life itself starting with our life so we may love our children but we don't love our children we send them to school we don't love our children when we send them to preschool and daycare and live amongst strangers, we don't love our children. When we go to Woolworths and buy the fresh food garbage, we don't love our children. When we feed them this shit, 
And on it goes like this. It doesn't stop. And all the cars we drive, all the pollution, we don't love our children. And the vaccinations that are unnatural, we don't love our children. And it goes on and on, and it's relentless, this fiction that we're worshipping as the beast. It's a beast of anti-life that we're all caught up in. And we're no longer part of our motherlands because we all were invaded and decimated by the invasion of this madness, this psychosis that brought about fiction into our lives. And so we have multiculturalism and all this mismatch going on, and most of us are are the descendants of, of invasion where our ancestors were uprooted from their motherlands and relocated elsewhere or tempted to move elsewhere with promises of a new life, like a lot of migrants that came to Australia and America and Canada and New Zealand, only to discover they're still slaves in a covert system of slavery where this fiction plays out because that was the purpose of fiction, of a cult, to dominate you because the people behind it believe they're doing the right thing. They believe that you are in their world to protect you and save you. Believe it or not, this is how they think these idiots. They're the ones who created Christianity. They wrote all the Bible. They wrote every they wrote every book that's fiction, every letter. When they said in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God, it's a lie because it's a fiction. A word is fiction. It's a definition. And the man acting as God is the G in the middle of the compass and square that form the fake universe with all its dimensions and levels and planes and astrology and numerology and, and higher beings and archetypes and angels this and angels that. And we balloon, we, 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 we breathe into these constructs and concepts and we form apparitions. And in cults, we can summon these images to us to have us believe that these are real. But they come from scripts that we were exposed to from so young. And we can go into these cults to be healed by all those who love Jesus, for example. But you're in a cult while you've been healed and been being healed. So you're a slave to commerce. Your head is addled with so many scripts that you don't even know who you are or what you are. Even though you still love Jesus and believe that Jesus saved you. A fiction that you, of your own placebo, amongst those of you who collectively created that healing. Because that's how powerful we are. So it becomes a Stockholm Syndrome from these placebos, where we are slaves to these slave masters, these occultists, who manipulate us on their chessboards, you know, the black and white, moving around from, uh, you need to work, you've got to get money, you've got to go from black to having no money to white to having money. You need to have profits, you need to, to buy real estate, have land title deeds, you're going from black to white, black to white, and all your life black to white, white back to black. Yeah, I've got to go to work, got to make money, got to pay my bills. Oh, I've gone from black to white. Next week, I've got to make money, got to go pay my bills. And oh, black to white. And so you're just, you're just trapped in this fiction of fictions, of so many fictions. And all of it is destroying you. You have no soul because you never created a real dream of life through your senses in a domain of, on land that nobody owns. That is your motherland where all your ancestors are singing the song of the life to you, always, through everything that exists of that motherland, what we call nature and earth and celestial space and bodies. And that's what was the purpose of life, for a child to be raised, to form its domain, its soul, to fill the information of its purpose within the motherland. And then when it leaves its life, what we call death, it hasn't died, but all the information still resonates. And as the star of that soul that joins the cluster of other stars and souls looking down over the dream of life, another child can access the purpose of the life, of your life, and why you did this and that and this and that, and why you thought this and that. But now we have A, B, C, one, two, three. We have every letter and word that's spinning our heads that's formed scripts within scripts within scripts within scripts within scripts within scripts within scripts of total nonsense. And we raise our children like this and we say we love them and we watch them go through school and we let them have careers and all that. But their domain is full of other men and women inside their head because it's other men and women inside that they're thinking as their life. 
that makes him hop in the car and drive the car because another man invented all this. Another man invented the petroleum system, dug the mountains up. Another man invented the roads and all the lights and all the rules and regulations and everything else. And you could go on and on with massive libraries of information, all of a fiction, for our child to be excited as it places its heart with becoming whatever career it chooses to take. But the whole time, it's solace. It doesn't know its true father and mother and their life. And if their true mother and father didn't know, well, they didn't know their grandparents either. And it goes right back to when we started forgetting our ancestry. Because eternal life means everything is still present to us. Every instant. And all that information is instant. And that's why the occultists are coming at you all the time. And that's why you have media everywhere. You have all kinds of frequencies and radio waves coming at your head all the time, all the time, all the time. Because you can only think what they want you to think. They only want you to respond and act to what they want you to respond and act. For the whole of your life and your solace. You're a drone, a zombie. Now, some of us can wake up from this and fight against it, break it down. And that's what I'm doing. And it's sad that even my own children don't even know me. And I'm responsible to fix that. So I've got to create a kingdom without the G, K I N D M, full of food forests and nature. And have my children return to discover what freedom of land is all about. And the true freedom to create their true life and to experience children playing in the motherland of our dreaming like this. So we might wake them up and they raise their children like this and they fall away from the courses and careers and the monetary systems and surviving as individuals out there. My children don't know me and it's sad. I didn't know that I never really loved my children that way that I was misguided, that I was an idiot, and that even my wife didn't know how to love me through 20-something years of marriage. She didn't, wasn't her fault. She just didn't know because of her repression and the way she was brought up. This innocence all back through her parents too. They didn't know. But the way this stuff works at us, we no longer love what we say we love. We no longer bond, most of us that is, bond with the marriage, the true marriage of a mutual co-creation where the purpose of the dream of life of the creator is infused in everything in the domain of our lives from us growing as children to us coming together in, 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 in marriage, in true co-creation on the motherland, which is all undefined. And that's why in the first of these videos I talked about land is not free, right? We are not free while land is not free. And we are not free because we're drones, we're slaves in domains that were artificially constructed for us. That, that basically it's like an artificial hive mind and we call them universities and schools and media outlets and things. And they become the hive minds we plug into as we listen to the media and be entertained and be tamed by all this entered into our heads by all the people who are in our heads we have to stop this because all this leads to is nothing everything anti-life leads to nothing absolute extinction soullessness total emptiness wouldn't matter how much money you have doesn't matter what knowledge you think you've accrued doesn't matter what career you have if you're in fiction you are dead and you're just a drone imagining that you have life. And it wouldn't matter what you think when you pass away. There will be nothing there for you. Because you never created the real life. The have you be the star that looks over the dream of life. Because all you've got is fiction. It's all the memories you have. And that's the price you pay. We all pay. If we don't wake up and stop this now. I mean, this is why I'm in this car now for probably more than a month now. I've been sleeping in this seat, in this front passenger seat. Because everyone's so trapped in the system with their fears and concerns and worries about tomorrow's food on the table, which is behind money, mortgages and leases, and the doubt and the uncertainty and the distrust and the clinging and all these things which has played out through the media with war and the Ukraine and Russia and worrying about food rations and 
because we have walked away from the food forests. We walked away from the true paradise of our motherlands. We were invaded. We didn't stop them. And these nutters are continuing to get in your head constantly. So you'll never wake up. And I don't care who you are. If you let your kids go to school, you hate your kids. You let your kids be educated. You hate your kids. You want them to die. Because that's what we're doing. We're inculcating them. We don't care what you think about what you think about me and me saying this. You don't love your kids. And while you feed them from the fiction of all this lifeless stuff, you're killing them. You're killing them. And while you teach that you believe that, that you own and they have to learn to own, you're killing them. Because you die when you believe you own anything. If you don't breathe out what you've breathed in and you own it and you hold on to it, you, you're dead. You're going to be gone. If you don't let go of what you've eaten, let your body pass it out, you're dead. Same with what you drink. You're dead if you hold on. You hold on to all the belief systems of all this emotional garbage because everything of your system life is rooted in doubt, uncertainty, distrust, fear, suspicion. It goes on and on and on and on, this darkness. It means you're dead. You're not in the moment. You don't live free. And land will never be free while you're like that. Because you're clinging to the fictions and the constructs and all the rules and regulations that, that you believe that gives you that security. But you don't have it. Because if you had it, you would never have anyone telling you to wear masks during coronavirus. Well, you wouldn't have anyone having to come to you until you put an injection in because you're a threat to other people. And even when you're injecting, you're still, you're still a threat to people who are not injected or injected because everyone who's been injected is getting more and more and more. No one's been protected because of this insanity, this psychosis. And this came out even through Port Arthur Massacre with Martin Bryant and all the guns and all this stuff. This was another one, the 9-11. The, the so yeah, with, with the whole, that whole thing of 9-11 was a big psyop done in our heads. Diana Spencer's murder, JFK's murder, the wars in Vietnam and Korea and South Korea and the Second World War and all these. It's all engineered by these people because they've got to keep you so distracted. So you're in their media. You're in their Hollywood you're in their current affairs. You're in their entertainment. Every which way you turn, you've got billboards and sexualization and, you know, you've got pornography coming at your left, right and center now. Everything's so desensitized because the sacredness of life and what is to be a man and the domain of the man has been destroyed. Completely and utterly destroyed. And the only way to fix it is to drop it and walk away, stop serving it, and work together in strengths, recreating food forests, and learn to live on land again, how our ancestors lived freely like this. We're not going back to the Dark Ages, because this is the Dark Ages. We never, our ancestors never left the Dark Ages. They were entered, they were forced to enter into the progress of civilization of this Dark Age, because it is immense harm to life. We're destroying living things we call mountains and valleys to create all kinds of fictions that we're now slaves to. And we have to perform every function of the scripts of every fiction, including screws and nails and bolts and pieces of timber and, 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 the, and all the building materials to form the buildings and the, and the roads and the infrastructures that, that have us all travel between each other through motor vehicles and all the other forms of transporting but we're all actually slaves in a system upholding fiction. And we help to carry the weight of that burden on each other. And that's why it is a curse, because all the time we're doing it, not only do we know who we are and we're dying without a soul, because we never created it, but we're encouraging everyone else to have no soul. And so that's the curse. The whole of system life is this curse of death, eternal death. When you're given the promise of eternal life, which happens when you're not trapped in fiction. And any of the religions are fiction. The true purpose of a man, I'm not talking gender now, male, female, and all that, I'm just man, is natural. If we're undefined, if we're raised undefined. And we won't play out the fiction with each other and force one or other to fit into someone else's model of what is the correct version. Because in paradise, none of this is going on in our heads. There's no... There's nothing coming from anyone to get inside your head or anyone's head about anything. So we have true peace and calm 
and absolute freedom and absolute respect and love. Because everything that's needed is already happening and it's there. We've got it all and more. But when you get inculcated, you get them inside your head. You're in a cult with them inside your head ruling you. And then you've got to force others inside that model. We call them our kids and our families. And we call them Jehovah Witnesses or Jews or Greeks, Aussies. And we're so blind and stupid what we've done to each other. Because that's how we create conflict and chaos. And that's why that judge said to Fiona, man is the highest power, but man subjugates himself under the law to have order. So they create the chaos through getting in your head and making sure the education system is intact and everything that supports getting in and staying in your head would lead to chaos where you'd be in conflict. Chaos with everything. And then they provide order, give them authority over it. That's why they made you claim land, made you claim anything of the system, because the ones high up don't claim anything. They just act as administrators over everyone who's making claims. So the curse is amongst all them. And while they believe they don't have the curse, and that goes back to the, the previous video that I made, the Achilles heel of law. This being the third of these three videos. Probably one more to come, and I don't want to make any more. I really want to inspire people to free up the land by freeing up the curse in your head. Stop claiming you own anything. We've already got more than enough space for everything to work. We have to fix this mess before we truly capitulate into the abyss of absolute devastation. Because all these people in the occults are all like Pied Pipers, and all their lackeys and intelligence operatives working through social media groups and whatever. They themselves are gone. They're solace. They're machines, drones. All the way through the hierarchy of this fake system matrix, they're all gone. And anyone is feeding, and when you look in social media, just feeding all the latest this, the latest this, the latest that about the Ukraine war, you're just a drone in a hive mind, distracted because you don't have a dream of your true life. And this is what the occult is all about, or what Satanism is all about. They've got to get in your head and do everything they can to control your vessel so they can make your vessel turn in any direction they want you to go. And this is what piracy is all about. And why the pirates sailed across the seas of alphabets, of indoctrination and brainwashing, so they can get at your child in the womb that you've already defined and hijack that vessel and board it boot out the host, the soul of the child, and put in place a fiction. So the fiction, with all the stuff coming out of every man who's been brainwashed as a drone, is in control of the helm of the vessel. And up top is the skull and bones. But you don't see it. You don't see the black and white skull and bones of Freemasonry, of black into white and white into black. Order out of chaos, chaos forming the next one and the next one and the next one. You don't know who you are. All the while, all of them are creating extinction. And they're all living lives, believing they've got these afterlives and all these things. They've got nothing because the life is already eternal life. There's no after life. It's just life without beginning or end. And either you're part of that and part of the good heart of life because that's what the good heart is when you're raised by nature. Or you give it up and get lost in all the dark side. You've given up that. You don't know who you are or what you are anymore. You won't even know who the creator is and the purpose of life. You won't even know your ancestors and their purpose. You won't even know your parents' purpose. You won't even know what your purpose is or even your kids' purpose and your great-grandchildren's purpose because your motherlands were devastated by this lie, by this invasion, this covert system of slavery. And they're all just dropped dead and gone. You'll all be gone soon. You, would, you can't sustain this. It's unsustainable. Thinking you're running around. And remember what I said in other videos. While you're running around with fiction, you've got the lives of every man, woman, and child behind it that you are needing for you to run the claim that you have money or you have wealth or you have this or that. And you don't see the scale of the curse working and all these people mostly trapped in scarcity and mediocrity and all the other destructive emotions that are going on. 
All the best, everyone. May some of you might wake up. Catch up.